The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robson on response to Audit Scotland NHS 2016 report and service development. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement and therefore there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Shona Robson. A tight 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I'll today outline the Scottish Government's response to last week's Audit Scotland report and the process of considering those proposed service changes and developments debated on the 28th of September. Audit Scotland has provided a, a balanced overview of the NHS and makes several recommendations which we accept in full. Our NHS cannot stand still and must continually evolve to deliver the best medicine and the best care, but also to ensure public money is spent as effectively as possible. Our clear vision to achieve this change has been acknowledged by the Auditor General, who said last week that the Scottish Government has, quotes, got a real vision to reshape services. Our strategy is founded on our twin approaches of investment and driving reform, and we have made significant investments in our NHS. Since 2010-11, the annual health resource budget has increased by 8.2% in real terms. The Audit Scotland report recognises the real terms increases in investment in our NHS, and this government will go further to ensure that the NHS receives the resources it needs to be equipped for the future. For example, we are increasing the NHS revenue budget by £500 million over inflation over this parliament. However, it's important to invest more than money, and it's imperative that we drive reform. As well as progress with integration, we've taken other steps this year to accelerate the shift in care and to develop and reform the delivery of health and care services. Increasing demands means we are accelerating change. We have shifted more NHS funding to support social care, published the National Clinical Strategy and the CMO's Realistic Medicine Report, accelerated plans for investment of £200 million in our new elective centres and are reviewing targets and indicators through work being led by Sir Harry Burns. As part of a plan to increase health spending by almost £2 billion by the end of this parliament, we'll take the uh, we'll take the share dedicated to primary services to 11% of frontline NHS spending. We'll increase our investment in primary care by an additional £500 million, helping to shift the balance of care and having for the first time ever at least half of our frontline NHS spend being invested out with acute hospitals. Despite the challenges, our NHS is performing well and its staff are to be thanked for working to address the increase in demand for services. We now have almost 1.5 million new outpatient attendances every year. That's up over 13.2% under this government. And since 2005 6 there have been 25% more hip replacements that are being carried out, but waiting times have reduced by 50%. For cataracts, we're seeing a 30% increase in procedures with a 40% reduction in waiting times. We know that more patients than ever before are being treated for cancer, with an increase of over 1,000 patients per quarter now being included in the 62-day cancer waiting time standards compared to earlier in 2010. But performance against the 62-day standard is lower than we want, which is one of the reasons we're investing £100 million over the next five years to improve cancer care. Plus, Scotland's core A&E departments have been the best performing in the UK for at least the last 18 months, outperforming England by almost eight percentage points in August 2016. The Audit Scotland report confirms that NHS staffing is at historically high levels, with over 11,000 more staff working in our health service than there were when we took office. We're also acting to ensure that our medical workforce grows further, making it more sustainable and increasing the number of undergraduate medical school and specialty training places, as well as creating a new graduate entry medical school. We're working to establish national and regional workforce planning, which will help deliver the direction set out in our national clinical strategy and protect our commitment to no compulsory redundancies. Through this, we'll work to address the cost of supplementary staffing, including efforts towards recruiting permanent posts when they're required and reducing agency spend. We'll also use these workforce planning efforts to make better use of our staff bank system and framework contract when supplementary staff are needed. As I've already said, we have consistently prioritised investment in the NHS and have increased frontline health spend and will continue to prioritise frontline health services as we go on to increase the NHS revenue budget by £500 million more than inflation over the course of this parliament. NHS territorial boards received a 5.5% increase this year compared to 2015-16 budget levels. 
This comprises an increase for frontline services of £224 million, delivering an above inflation increase and an additional £250 million when the new health and social care partnerships are using to invest in social care under our arrangements for integration. We will consider the Audit Scotland proposal for three-year budget management within our work to examine how to provide NHS boards with more financial flexibility and within the context of the accounting and financial management framework set out by the Treasury. Despite this record level of resource, we recognise the challenge of meeting increased demand. As the Auditor-General has made clear in her report, more needs to be done than simply giving the NHS extra money, which is why our plans for change are so important. I can confirm by the end of this year, we will set out in a single framework a transformational change delivery plan, which will bring together the different strands of reform that I've already set out, and I will keep Parliament informed of the progress being made. Moving to service developments, Audit Scotland has been clear that some reorganisation of services will be required, but that does not mean that every proposal made by every board will be approved. We are committed to robust evidence-based policy making that delivers better outcomes. However, to stand against any change anywhere in acute services is simply not credible. Where change is advocated, we must ensure that local boards work with all stakeholders to explore any issues and benefits. And I want to reiterate that any major change proposals must be subject to formal public consultation and ministerial approval. Within this, I will take the opportunity to update Parliament on the specific service changes debated last month. On cleft surgery, the recommendation endorsed by the Royal College of Surgeons to consolidate on a single site in Glasgow is distinct in the sense that it relates to a specialist national service as opposed to a local service. As such, I'm now considering the proposal in line with the precedent of ministers making the final decision on national specialist services. I've met with the clinical teams in both Glasgow and Edinburgh, and in the light of these discussions and giving full consideration of the evidence, I expect to make a decision before the end of the year. NHS Lanarkshire's longer-term plans as part of their local clinical strategy have been designated as major change by the board. Boards can choose to designate proposals as major and follow the appropriate process without the need to ask ministers. These plans were subject to formal public consultation between the 2nd of August and yesterday. The board intends to consider the outcomes of this at their meeting on the 30th of November, informed by the report of the Scottish Health Council on the consultation. Any board decision made on associated specific major change service proposals will then be subject to my approval. What is beyond question is that all three acute hospitals will retain their A&E departments for the benefit of local people. The NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Board agreed at its meeting on the 18th of October that their proposals on paediatric services at the Royal Alexandra Hospital should be designated major. The board will now undertake three months of formal public consultation due to begin next Monday. The board is scheduled to consider the outcomes of this by spring of next year, as informed by a report on the consultation by the Scottish Health Council. Any board decision made on these service change proposals will then be subject to my approval or otherwise. Presiding officer, in terms of the remaining proposals from NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, those affecting deliveries at the community maternity units at the Inverclyde Royal Hospital and the Vale of Leaven Hospital, those affecting inpatient care at the Centre for Integrative Care and those affecting Lightburn Hospital are all subject to ongoing public engagement. This cannot be prejudged as it is possible some or all of the proposals may change as a result and some may not proceed at all. The Scottish Health Council continues to monitor the engagement activity and will offer a view on the designation of the proposals at the end of the activity, likely to be in early December. Ministers will then carefully consider the views on designation from both the Health Board and the Health Council and come to a decision. The Board will then consider the next steps as informed by the designation decisions at its meeting on the 20th of December. Presiding officer, while I will not prejudge these proposals, I would want to reiterate that they must be consistent with national policy, such as a review of maternity services due for publication soon. I would also want to put on record once again this government's commitment to the vision for the Vale of Leaven and to say that any final proposals for Lightburn must address the concerns that led to our previous decision in 2011. I will keep Parliament informed as further progress is made with these proposals. 
In conclusion, presiding officer, I believe there is a clear case that the, the sh to further shift from acute uh, to primary and community services. I'm confident that there is a broad consensus on this and that the Audit Scotland report supports this view. Certainly, so far, no one and no party in this chamber has brought forward an alternative way forward. I believe this consensus can be underpinned by the mutual recognition that our NHS continues to require increased investment and that it must reform to ensure that it remains true to its founding principles, publicly owned and free at the point of need. I'm happy to take questions on my statement. Uh, we'll now move to questions. Time is very, very tight. So the shorter the questions and answers, the more members will be able to take part. Please press your request to speak buttons. And I call on Donald Cameron to be followed by Anna Sarmer. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of her statement. Um, we clearly have a debate on the report later, um, so I'll keep my observations short. There's much in the statement that um, wasn't new, um, but I think it's f important to state that since the SNP first entered office almost 10 years ago, Audit Scotland have argued that a shift from traditional means of delivering services to community-based services is required to change the way that services are delivered. And almost every single Audit Scotland report since has noticed that progress has been slow uh, or, or non-existent. Uh, and that funding hasn't been transferred from acute services to community-based services at the rate that it should be. So while we welcome the announcement to shift the balance of care towards primary care, the fact remains that it has taken far too long for this government to take action. And it shouldn't require in this session at least, two opposition debates and a damning public report to spur the Scottish Government into taking steps. Can I ask two questions of the Cabinet Secretary? On workforce planning, uh, NHA staffing is clearly an issue that on this side of the chamber we have concentrated on. Will the Scottish Government commit to publishing a national workforce plan immediately and commit to presenting an update to the Scottish Parliament every six months? And secondly, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, uh, in light of her announcement that a share of primary services spending would rise, or will rise, to 11% of frontline NHS spending, how much of that will go specifically to general practice? Shona Robson. Uh, can I thank uh, Donald Cameron for his uh, questions? Uh, he talks about the time that it's taking to shift the, the balance of care. It is a challenge and it is a difficult thing to do. I think all health systems would acknowledge that. However, one of the big achievements of this government in moving towards the shift of balance of care has been, of course, the integration of health and care services, one of the biggest uh, reforms we've seen in the public sector uh, in a generation. So uh, while I accept the pace needs to be increased, I think it should be recognised that that has been a substantial uh, leap forward in uh, the sh shifting the balance of care through the integration of those services. In terms of workforce planning, we've already set out our plans to develop national and regional workforce plans. We will be publishing a discussion document because stakeholders want to be involved in that and we'll be doing that by the end of the year. I am happy uh, to take on board his suggestion about six monthly updates. Uh, happy to, to, to look at that, whether that can be delivered and if it can, then we will do that. In terms of the primary care services, I'm sure he will, as well as I do, uh, welcome the announcement that the First Minister made uh, to increase the share of spend on primary care services. That will mean change, though, because it will mean having to up the, the, and uh, increase the, the shift in the balance of care from acute services in order to deliver that shift in balance to primary care services. He will recognise, as well as I do, that um, it is not just about investing in general practice, although we will do that, and he knows that we're working on a new contract with the BMA. It is also about that wider primary care care team and the workforce plans that we will set out will address not just general practice but that wider primary care team and taking that plan forward. Anna Sarwar to be followed by Fulton McGregor. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement but the truth is the Cabinet Secretary has been dragged kicking and screaming to this chamber because a week after the worst state of the NHS report since devolution the Cabinet Secretary is before us armed only with warm words. No recognition of the crisis in the NHS no acceptance of our government's role in the failures, no plan to reverse the damaging cuts to frontline services, 
and a government letting down the staff and patients in our NHS. Now, while we'll focus on Audit Scotland in the debate later, I want to focus my remarks on the proposed service changes. The reality is that this is disappointing that the Health Secretary has chosen not to accept the will of Parliament in this statement today, because in actual fact she says nothing new. There is no comfort for those communities facing the loss of vital local services and valued local uh, input. And, Presiding Officer, I'll give one example. How can the Cabinet Secretary come to this chamber and say that a hospital closure, not a ward closure, not a downgrade of services, but the complete closure of Lightburn Hospital is not a major service change? Because what we have... Mr Sarwar, you're almost at the end of your time and you haven't asked a question yet. I'm just coming to the question, Deputy President. Please Officer. What hurry we up. have is a minister who is clearly out of her depth. On GMS, on the day of the Audit Scotland report... Mr Sarwar, could question. you ask a question, please? It is my question, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Health Secretary said that Labour was putting blocks in the way of any service changes in Parliament. So can the Cabinet Secretary now clarify which service changes she was referring to and if the every promise that her party made before the election about local NHS services will be kept? Shona Robson. I think Anna Sarwar's... Uh, contribution uh, to this speech shows that he has nothing to say uh, other than just personal abuse. I think that's a, a thin fig leaf for having nothing to say about the NHS. In terms of the Audit Scotland report, unlike Anna Sarwa's contribution, it was a balanced report. It recognised some of the achievements that have been made by the staff, the hard-working staff in our NHS, unlike Al, uh, Anna Sarwa's contribution. Uh, we do have the right strategies in place. Audit Scotland says that we do. The opposition, uh, Anisarwa, has no plans, no alternative vision for the NHS. We have the vision, we have the strategies. Audit Scotland says they are the right ones. In terms of the will of Parliament, I have come here today and I have laid out the decisions I will make on those service change proposals that are coming to me. Uh, in terms of Lightburn, uh, it may well be a major service change proposal. It's just that we're not at that stage at the moment. If it does get to that stage, then it will come to me for decision. I have made very clear in my statement that on the 20th of December, Glasgow will decide which service change proposals, if any, they are continuing with. It would be wrong to call in a service change proposal that at the moment might not even exist. I would have thought even Anna Sarwar would understand that part of the process. So I suggest Anna Sarwar goes back, does his homework, perhaps comes back to this chamber a little more informed than he has today. Can, can I say to the Chamber that when front benchers overrun their time, all it does is penalise their colleagues. So can I have Fulton McGregor followed by Miles Briggs, please? Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government announced a review chaired by former Chief Medical Officer Sir Harry Burns into health and social care targets and indicators, which has been advocated by the BMA, RCN and medical colleagues. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that certain performance targets, such as 95% of patients being seen in A&E within four hours and cancer treatment targets, will be retained within this wider work? Shona Robson. Uh, can I say to Fulton McGregor that, as I have said previously, that the work of Harry Burns in reviewing the targets is very, very important and one that I think has the support of the majority of this chamber because... It's very important that we look at the outcomes for patients and that our targets better reflect those outcomes uh, for patients. And that is something that certainly the Royal Colleges support and many stakeholders support. But in going forward, I have made um, a, a couple of things very clear. One is that on cancer, we believe that uh, it's very important that the cancer targets improve the care and treatment for cancer patients. And that's why, of course, we're investing £100 million of additional money over the next five years. And we would expect any cancer review of cancer targets to reflect um, our ambitions to improve the care and treatment for cancer patients. In terms of a and &E targets, the four-hour target. Again, I've said previously, and the Royal College of Emergency Medicine feel quite strongly about this, that the four-hour target is a, a barometer of how the whole hospital is performing. So I would take some persuading away from the four-hour target, but it might be that it can be made more sophisticated uh, in nature, and that's something that I'm sure Harry Burns will look at. Miles Briggs, followed by Claire Hockey. 
Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced a uh, copy of her statement? The Audit Scotland report has NHS Lothian's financial position as a case study on page 15. Given that NHS Lothian, Tayside and NHS 24 all continue to face major financial difficulties, what assurance has the Cabinet Secretary been given that this is not impacting on patient care? And with regards to cleft surgery, the Royal College of Surgeons do indeed support the principle of centralisation, but they've said it's not in their role to advise on a location something which the Cabinet Secretary's statement is clearly misleading on. Can I ask her to correct this? Shona Robson. Well, Miles Briggs that the um, uplift to NHS Lothian um, for 2015-16 uh, was 6.4% uh, and the Lo NHS Lothian of course have been an NRAC beneficiary in terms of the resources going forward. However, I do recognise some of the challenges within NHS Lothian. Uh, my officials have been working very closely with NHS Lothian to address some of their outpatient waits, for example, and I'll have more to say about uh, initiatives around improving outpatient performance uh, uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, in terms of the cleft surgery, uh, I have laid out very clearly that that decision has now come to me. Uh, the college's view has been made very, very clear indeed. I had a very productive meeting with the Glasgow surgeons and indeed the Edinburgh surgeon and her team. What I want to do now is to look at all of that and come to the right conclusions about what is in the best interest of patients across the whole of Scotland. And I hope that Miles Briggs will appreciate that that is the founding principle of my decision going forward. Claire Hawkey, followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, staff banks can provide boards with access to a pool of appropriate trained non-agency staff who can provide short-term supplementary cover, cover when required. And I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will join me in commending those who give of their time in this way to fill in, often at short notice. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what percentage of total nursing and midwifery staff in the NHS in Scotland is represented by agency staff and what the Scottish Government is doing to reduce the reliance on agency staff? Jenny Mara, followed by Bob oh, Doris. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so determined to get through these and let other people in. Sorry, Shona Robs. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, can I, I answer Claire Hoy's uh, question, firstly by commending the, the work of all staff across our, our NHS, but uh, she makes an important point. Agency nursing does represent about 0.4% of the total nursing and midwifery staffing in the NHS in Scotland, so it is proportionately very small. However, it is still too high, and that is why we have a programme of work undergo, underway nationally, working with boards to look at how we uh, um, have a more effective management of all temporary staffing. Uh, we're working with uh, boards to reduce reliance on and the costs of temporary agency and bank staffing. The team are ensuring that when temporary staff are required, the agency is the very, very last resort. And as part of this, we've implemented monthly agency spend reporting to make sure boards are informed of their spend and know where to focus their attention in addressing this. May we now have Jenny Mara, followed by Bob Doris. Spending on agency staff is certainly too high, Cabinet Secretary and NHS Tayside. You'll know from the Audit Scotland report just published. Spending on agency sta staff in Tayside has increased by 39% just over the last year. Can the Cabinet Secretary please tell me how the framework contract in her statement will assist this critical overspend in NHS Tayside? Shona Robson. Actually, Jenny Mara makes an important point here. There are big disparities between the spend on agency staff between boards. Some are spending far higher uh, than other boards, and that is something that we are absolutely wanting to address and are working with Tayside to address. Now, there are some regional variations, and some boards find it harder to recruit permanent staff, but without a doubt, bearing down on agency uh, costs is critical here, and we have made it very, very clear to the management team in Tayside. We expect them to do that as a matter of priority, but we will help them do that. And part of the solution is converting some of those, that agency spend into substantive posts and helping boards uh, to do that. The work that I have uh, announced in terms of the delivery plan going forward and the workforce element of that 
both the National Workforce Plan and the Regional Workforce Plan will also help us to plan the numbers of nursing and midwifery posts required going forward so that we can make sure that we have the right training places and that we have the right uh, numbers in the right places to support that. Very happy to keep Jenny Mara updated around the work that we're going to take forward with Tayside specifically. Bob Doris, followed by Alison Johnson. Uh, thank you. Cabinet Secretary, Audit Scotland highlights in its report that Greater Glasgow has an impressive record on key NHS indicators such as treatment time guarantee, referral to outpatient appointment, as well as a 30% fall in bed days lost via delayed discharge. However, its a &E performance was not impressive compared to other Scottish boards. How do we use this report to ensure that best practice is shared between boards to ensure that we constantly drive up standards and, of course, performance? Shona Robson. Bob Doris um, raises some important points. The 30% fall in bed days lost in Glasgow has been very impressive. We have been uh, looking at what Glasgow have done uh, with their, their partners and we are keen that other partnerships, integrated partnerships, follow suit to uh, address the uh, the best ways of reducing delay. We know what works and we want other partnerships to follow uh, what works and I think Glasgow have uh, led the way on that. In terms of the a &E performance, he, Bob Doris will be aware that a huge programme of work um, delivering six essential actions, these are the six things that we know have to be done in order to improve a &E performance across the board. I think the performance over the last 18 months, the fact that it is the best across the whole of the UK and has dramatically increased and improved, shows that that programme of work, those six essential actions have worked. Glasgow has had more of a challenge and there have been particular challenges at the Queen Elizabeth and the Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Uh, my team of officials have been working very, very closely with Glasgow to address uh, those issues and I'm very confident that uh, that work will uh, bear fruit and that Glasgow's performance uh, will improve. Alison Johnson followed by Brian Whittle. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Investment in prevention is key to reducing increased demand for NHS services. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what action the Scottish Government is taking to develop a truly integrated public health strategy as called for in Audit Scotland report, as today's statement hasn't addressed the urgent need for a truly integrated new public health strategy with a focus on prevention at all? Thank you. Shona Robson. Well, um, Alison Johnson uh, makes a, an important point about prevention. She will be aware of the review of public health and the fact that we will now be, have a new public health strategy going forward. I'm keen that that public health resource, and we're looking at how best to consolidate that public health resource uh, to be able to deliver a service, not just to the NHS, but to the rest of the public sector, local government in particular, to help uh, decision makers make the right decisions based on the data and what the evidence tells us about the needs of the local population, and more importantly, what programmes uh, within public health and, and prevention will actually actually work to keep people out of our hospitals, to actually stop them falling ill in the first place. So I'm very happy again to keep Alison Johnson updated on the progress of that, uh, that new public health strategy and indeed bringing the public health resource uh, into the one place and the benefits I think that will deliver. I call Brian Whittle and if he's very quick I can call Colin Smith. Thank you Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I was disappointed in the Cabinet Secretary's statement that there was not one mention of tackling the alarming rise of serious preventable disease epidemic. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary when is this government going to give proper thought and attention to a sustainable plan to address the prevention of ill health and growing health inequality? Shona Robson. I think as I've just uh, answered to Alison Johnson, uh, Brian Whittle will appreciate that there has been a huge amount of work that has gone into the review of public health, which will help us to not just bring um, the public health resources uh, and workforce together into, in a more coherent fashion, but to make sure that that then delivers some of the changes that Brian Whittle is talking about. Those changes can't be delivered by the NHS itself. This is about uh, across the whole of the public sector, not least involving local government. So I'm very keen mm -hmm. that we give prevention and public health more of a focus. I think the review has helped us uh, find a way forward to doing that. And again, very happy to keep Brian Whittle updated of the progress of that going forward. Uh, the last question is Colin Smith. 
Thank you, Deputy President Officer. The Audit Scotland report describes the cuts facing health boards as unprecedented. £293 million for 2015-16, rising to £492 million for 2016-17. Does the Cabinet Secretary still believe these cuts are merely efficiency savings? And is she prepared to say to the Chamber today that not a single penny of those cuts, not a single measure taken to meet those cuts, will impact adversely on patient care? Robson. Smith is that by the end of this Parliament, we will have increased health funding by almost £2 billion, building on the £3.3 billion increase already delivered under this Government. By the end of this Parliament, health funding will be at least £500 million more than inflation-only increases. That was the highest offer of any party in this Chamber, including your party. Yep. Your party had the lowest offer of health funding out of all the parties Please, in could this you close Chamber. Now, Cabinet so I will take no lessons, no lessons from the Labour Party about health funding. What is important, though, is not just the amount of money going into the NHS, but what that money is spent on, which is why we need to shift the balance of Care, with additional 500 million into primary care by the end of this Parliament. Please I close now, Cabinet Secretary. Get the support across this chamber. Point of order. has had since the, the damning publication of the Audit Scotland report last week. Yet we have had five sycophantic questions from the government benches to pad out the time and we have not been able to call every party in this place. Can we please extend the time? Uh, Mr Cole Hamilton, we had six opposition questions. We had three government questions. If that's an issue, please take it up with your business manager where there can perhaps be discussion amongst all parties about asking questions rather than making statements and giving the courtesy to their backbench colleagues to allow them all to take part. There is a debate on the same subject later this afternoon and Histrionics will not change my mind, Mr Cole Hamilton. Thank you.